This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today I'm pleased to have iconic heavy metal vocalist Ronnie James Dio on my show. So you do Mob Rules, mm -hmm. you do this huge tour, sell out stadiums, and then at some point you're mixing Live Evil uh -huh. in the studio, and right. there's a debacle. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me about what happened. Well, you know, we, you know, Vinny and I really didn't know anything about it. You know, I mean, the debacle was that it ended so quickly. Uh, you know, we went to the studio the first two days, and Tony and Geezer never turned up. And then uh, uh, two days after that, I got a call from Geezer, and he said, well, this, we don't think this is really working out, so we're going to let Tony's going to produce the album. Went, okay, all right, fine. Well, you know, to me, that was the end of it anyway. I mean, I, I'm not going to not take part in... You know, an album that I I had that much to do with, especially with my voice on it. Nah, okay, fine, off you go. And that was the end. I knew that was the end, and I was very happy that it was the end. It gave me a chance to form another band, form Dio, so it was fine. Uh, but that's what happened, and it was because they they were told that Vinny and I had gone in on those two days and raised up the vocals in the mix and taken the guitar down. And we hadn't started mixing yet, so I don't see where any of that came in. But that was the excuse for things that happened at that point. Everybody was out of control. Well, I mean, Vinny weren't. But they were too many drugs going down, you know. Too many people whispering in their ears. You don't need this. You don't need him. Blah 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 blah. blah. Fine, okay, off you go. And so that was the end of it. You know, too too many whispers in too many people's ears, and too too many people who were who were dealing with uh, outside influences that shouldn't have been done. You know, it's amazing that somebody that's part of a very successful machine would decide to dismantle that machine for stupid reasons. Yeah, I've always felt that too. I've always felt that, but I've always found that really was the Sabbath way. It really was. If there wasn't a problem, one would be created. And fix it, not a chance. You know? I mean, we're talking a different time now. Luckily, we've all grown up, and yeah. it's not that now. But that's what it was. It was that. And again, you know, everybody was a lot younger, and we were a whole lot more successful. Remember, Sabbath, from uh, until Heaven and Hell, were pretty down in the doldrums for like four or five years, and pretty much a laughing stock of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, Heaven and Hell changed all that. And uh, you're right. How on earth do you dismantle something that was that good and now has proven itself to be that good after all these years because we can do it again and everyone wants to see it? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but perhaps it wasn't worth fighting for. It certainly wasn't worth fighting for for me. And perhaps it was worth fighting for for them. I don't know. But again, it was the time and it was, the, it was too much temptation and not enough realization. You gather some fantastic musicians together and you create Dio. Vinny and I went over to England looking for a couple of players, uh, looking for a guitar player, couldn't find anybody. Uh, I called Jimmy, Jimmy Bain. First time I'd talked to Jimmy since he'd been in Rainbow. Called Jimmy, Jimmy had just gotten home. Up for, he was on the road with Phil Linnett in a band called The Greedy Bastards for a while. And he said, oh yeah, I got a guitar player. I got a couple of them. So, okay, so he came over to the hotel, played us two guitar players, Viv and John Sykes. John was just out of, uh, um, uh, what were they called? Oh, Tigers of Pantang. Tigers of Pantang, yeah. Right? He was just out of that band, and we listened to both tapes and liked Viv better. Uh, not because one was better than the other, but Viv seemed to have a little bit more Chuck Berry in him for some reason. Uh, and it was a great choice, because he was a great guitar player. And Jimmy said, well, I guess I'm the bass player then. But, okay. And that was it. Had a band. Boom, straight to America. We wrote the songs I'd already written. Um, uh, Holy Diver and, and Rainbow in the Dark, so we had two good ones already. Uh, I'm not, uh, we wrote, uh, uh, yeah, it was Holy Diver and Don't Talk to Strangers, not Rainbow in the Dark. Uh, so we had, a, uh, it's just, it's, we had a good leg up, we started rehearsing, boom, brilliant. We produced it ourselves with our engineer Angelo Arcuri, who never engineered anything before from, uh, at, that, at that level, but had learned like we had that, hey, let's give it a try. Yeah. It was just all new and interesting and exciting and wonderful. And, it was just a great album with great songs, great players. Uh, you know, it's all about the material. If you don't have great songs, you may as well kiss it in. But, you know, we knew what we were doing with it, and it worked. So that was it. Don't Talk to Strangers. Mm -hmm. What a fantastic song. Yes, it is a great song. Um, don't Dream of Women, because they'll only bring you down. Always. Now tell me, what, how, how, what, tell me about this, why you wrote that in that song. I was probably breaking up with Wendy at that particular point, probably, mm -hmm. or with somebody. I mean, yeah, it was, would be Wendy. And I, you know, uh, a lot of the things that people write are very personal. They are identifiable as part of your biography, and so I think that became part of it too. You know, I mean, and the more times you get hurt by a woman, guys go, "Let it happen again." But we always do, don't we? So it was it was a line again delivered to people who who felt that way, like the lonely people I talked about before. You know, if you think about this, don't don't put all of your eggs in that 
dreaming women basket or else you're going to get that egg's going to be thrown at you. So a lot of the things I've done have been warnings. You know, be careful, you know, of women. Be careful of evil. Be careful of too much good. Be careful of people who are trying to blind you. You know, be careful for those people, as I said about, who nobody cares about. So, you know, that was probably for them too, but I'm sure it was, there, there was a lot of person, personal uh, baggage. Was I, a- I always t- took that song to heart, and also um, the song Straight Through the Heart. Mm-hmm. Is it, 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 like you said, you write songs that are warnings. You know, um, I just um, got a CD set of The 48 Laws of Power. Mm-hmm. And I, have you ever read the book? Nope. Or, nope. But the funny thing is, after listening to The 48 Laws of Power and then listening to Straight Through the Heart, the message, you know, pretty much don't tell people what you're feeling inside of here because they'll take it and use it against you. Always. Always. And then here it comes again. And you should have expected that, you know. That was my whole point of the whole song. You did all these things I told you you shouldn't do, and you keep repeating the same mistakes. And guess what? Here it comes again. Straight through the heart. Yeah. Yep. Another True. fantastic song. And who is the holy diver? Holy Diver was a Christ-like figure. It was meant to be Christ, really. Um, the figure who was now on a di- in a different place, not on the earth, but on a different planet. Let's say planet Orc. Uh, makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and if it were that, um, they have a savior, just like our Christ figure. And the Christ figure goes, saved you all. Done it, you know, done all I can. I'm going to go down someplace else now. So now he's going down to the Midnight Sea, which to them is a different place, a different planet, perhaps, to save another sect of humanity but the whole point of it is that they're saying to them don't go no don't go there's like tigers down there who are mean and they're you know they'll, they'll take you apart and you know and most importantly we we won't have you because we're a bunch of selfish bastards just like all of humanity and that's what the message is inside that song and the holy diver is a christ-like figure who is willing to sacrifice himself for humanity who doesn't give a crap about anybody but themselves most of them so after the, this huge success of Dio, at some point you get Sabbath back together. Mm-hmm. Now tell me about that. Well, I think we'd gone through a time in Dio where the people I was playing with I wasn't really happy with. It's not them individually, but as a group, you know, I, thought, I love the guitar player, Rowan Robinson, Robertson was our guitar player. He was only 16 when he joined him. Brilliant guitar player, great kid, still is, still always will be. A couple of the other, I mean, Simon Wright, who's played with me now forever and ever, that was wonderful. But Simon came in off the end of, you know, off the an end of a D- ACDC album, then went back and played with him again. So it was never going to be like that kind of permanent thing. Uh, bass player Teddy Cook, you know, he wasn't my favorite bass player on earth. Maybe he wasn't quite the right player for the band. Um, uh, and we had uh, Jens Johansson, brilliant keyboard player, mm. playing with us. But I think all together, it just was. I think I'd been at it too long with a band that had been too good for too long, and now I had to chop and change and put another one together. And I think I got weary of it. I really did. And now suddenly, in place was going to be the Sabbath that I knew before, with a guitar player that I loved and a bass player that was brilliant and a drummer who was amazing and a band that wrote well together. And we can do this again. And so we did. So it was the time was right for me not to do Dio again, which didn't mean I wasn't I'm never going to do it again, which obviously was proven that I, that I would. But I never thought this is the end of it. I don't ever. I'm only going to be in Sabbath again. But it was the right time to do that again, to you know perhaps stop wallowing in a little bit of you know anonymity, which perhaps was happening a little bit too, because that it you know all those things were coming at a time when you know that grunge was just about to kick the crap out of all of us and i knew this was over from the beginning you know i mean this tour was only going to last till we got to los angeles because it was had been mentioned not mentioned but told to me that we were now going to not be doing this tour as our own tour all the way through it but when we got to los angeles we were going to open for ozzy mm-hmm. well after all the th- horrible things that had been said about tony about me by that camp at that particular point you know i, I had too much pride i went no i'm sorry i'm not going to not opening for him I got back in this band, Black Sabbath, again, because we are Black Sabbath, not because we have to go and now open for somebody who has who said all these horrible things and we don't need to tour with, but let's stand on our own. You know, we don't need to do this. Well, no, no, I think this is good. No. Oh, you'll change your mind. No, I won't. I'm not going to do it. You understand that? Well, a month later, or well, actually uh, three weeks later, when I when they said, so you're going to do the... I said, no, I'm not. I told you I'm not. Then they went out and looked for somebody else to do those two shows. That's how important they must have been. But I was not about to let what I knew was going to be the end from day one, going over to Los Angeles, stop me from enjoying it. Because the worst thing I could have ever done, not only for the, for myself but for an audience, was to be up there going, me, 
me, me, me, me, me. I'm going to be better than you. Me, me. Check this out. I never did that. I became, this, I stayed the same person I always was. I was in this band. I wanted that band to be great and people to be proud of what they saw. And it was up until the point when I left. Uh, and that's why they were great shows because I wouldn't let them be anything other than great shows. The blaring out show.